Welcome back to episode three. Today is my favorite episode. Am I? I'm sorry. Fast food. <laughs> Being gluten free, I can't go to any fast food place anywhere. Yes. The only thing I can get is ice cream and a cup from any fast food place. <laughs> That's pretty sad. That is pretty sad, but we find ways to get fast. Yeah, absolutely. I actually came up with a lot of these recipes working at a school. My kids loved fast food. Yes. McDonald's was lunch every day. And now that I can come up with awesome, healthy recipes, and they're like, whoa, I can make fast food at home and it's exactly. healthy? Yes. It's great. It's a win-win for everyone. So enjoy this episode. Take these recipes. Create them at home. Do them with your kids. Do them with your friends. Yes. And have fun. And have fun. And also, always, whenever you're cooking, add your own twist to it. You yeah, don't have to stick absolutely. by our recipe 100%. Make sure you add your own twist to give it that life to it, to say that this is mine, this is what I created, now here you go. So what are we making with that? Today, you're doing turkey burgers. Turkey burgers and sweet potato fries. Pretty excited Baked for that. Baked sweet potato fries like that. And you're using... Sweet, sweet Christine's bread. <laughs> you're going to get used to this. Yes, I am. It's actually really good. It's like it a gluten-free potato bread. Well, actually, you know I've had a couple of your sandwiches with it, so you really can't tell the difference. That's because my sandwiches are awesome. That too. That too. That's not uh, That is the truth. And you can't handle the truth. <laughs> so what are you making today, Laura? I'm making my famous mozzarella sticks. Yes. This is a recipe that I actually put on my blog when it was Super Bowl time. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gluten Free that. Foodie Cutie blog. Yes. Check it out recently. Yes, yes, I have. I don't actually, know how I got coming that name. Gluten Free Foodie Cutie. Oh, we were talking about the Gluten Free Orange today. Yes. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's pretty awesome. I watch, I watch. I so, <laughs> my mozzarella sticks are awesome. They're baked, they're low fat, and they're gluten free. Yes, they are. That is like three wins in one. In one, and you can eat as many as you like. Yeah, absolutely. They're great. <laughs> exactly. They're oh. great. I'm making a sauce for it? Yeah, I hope so. Oh, yeah. I don't do the sauces. You're, you're the sauce man. I try. I try. So I'm going to do, you know, just a classic tomato, roasted tomato sauce. Of course, we're going to kick it up a little bit with a little heat because we both like heat. She loves spicy. I love spicy. Hopefully, you'll love spicy. If not, we'll just bring it down a little bit. But that's what we're making. I'm hungry. Can we get to work? Yeah, please. We, yes. Catch you in the kitchen. Got it. So we're back. Fast food going to help you. Right now, I'm about to prepare two recipes for you. I'm going to do the turkey burger, show you how to mix that up, and also I'm going to do the sweet potato fries. So first, let me grab a sweet potato. We're going to start with the sweet potato fries. So here you see, I have a sweet potato whose skin has been fully removed. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to edge it out, take off the ends. And what you want to do is, because we're going to be cutting this bayonet style, basically the shoestring, you want to make sure that you edge off the sides. So you want to make sure that you put an edge on each side so that way it can lay flat. And what you want to do is you want to cut about a half to three-fourths of an inch thick. So make sure your knife is really sharp when you're doing this because by all means it's going to be harder to cut a sweet potato than it is a regular potato because of the starch content. So remember we're cutting about half to three-fourths of an inch and then we're going to take and we're going to cut another half to three-fourths of an inch. And basically, you're going to have uniform cuts like that. So now that we have all of our sweet potatoes cut right here, as you see, shoestrings or bayonet style, what we're going to do is we're going to take some olive oil. We're going to drizzle that in there. And I would say about two to three tablespoons full not really cooking unless you're using your hands. So once we have that all incorporated, a little bit of cinnamon salt, and it's basically just some kosher salt added with a little bit of cinnamon. I would say two parts, uh, two parts salt to one and a half parts cinnamon, or maybe two parts to one part. We're gonna sprinkle that in. Make sure that they get coated. So all together, we probably have about another three tablespoons of mixture. So about two tablespoons, a little less of salt, and about one tablespoon, a little bit of more cinnamon. And the thing about the cinnamon is going to give you a sweet and savory flavor. Whenever you think of cinnamon, people always wonder how the cinnamon give you a savory flavor. How I was taught, the way to think about it, think about Mike and Mike hot tamales. Hot tamales are nothing but pure cinnamon, basically. You know how you first bite into it, you get that sweet flavor, but then at the end you get that umph, that kick of spice. 
and that savory flavor, that's what cinnamon is. So they're about almost coated. So we're gonna lay these out on the baking sheet. That's how they should look when they're coated. I'm gonna grab a baking sheet, lay these out, come back, show you guys how to make this turkey burger, and we can move on with the next sample. So now we're gonna move on to our turkey burgers. What we have here is some lean ground turkey, so we're gonna take that. We have one egg that's whisked up. Add your egg to your ground turkey. So the egg, we added it in, is gonna act as a binding agent. Being as though turkey is a lean meat, we have to have something to add the extra bind to it. If it was a fatty meat, it was more fattier, then it actually would bind better. Also, we're gonna take some of our gluten-free bread crumbs that I've made. Just took a couple of slices of bread, dusted them off with a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, threw them in the oven for about five to seven minutes on about 350 to 375, just enough so that they could get a crust. Once you get that, all you wanna do is just put it in a blender, blend it up or pulse it probably four or five times just until you get that nice consistency of the breadcrumbs that you want. So we add about one-fourth breadcrumbs. I'll say you might want to add about one-fourth to one-third of a cup of breadcrumbs depending on how thick you want your burgers. I'm going to add a little bit, just a little bit more. Make sure that it holds properly. Fold that in. Once that's folded in, have some red onion. This is about one third of a medium sized red onion. You want to add all of that in. We have about half of a red pepper, medium size as well. We want to add that in. And just like we did with the other ingredients, we're going to fold it. Now this is how I've been taught to make turkey burgers. Incorporate some of your accoutrements, like your onions, your peppers, your garlic, whatever you may want to incorporate that you may normally put on top of a burger, you can also put it inside of the meat as well. That way you can just add your tomatoes and your lettuce at the end and your cheese. You won't have to worry about everything else because it's already incorporated inside of the burger. And of course, my garlic right here, we have about one tablespoon of garlic and our seasonings. In our seasoning bowl, we have some coriander, some salt, some ground pepper, a little bit of chili powder, and some herb provence. Don't worry about the measurements for now because you'll be able to find that at the end of the show. We'll have all the recipes listed and you'll be able to find the exact measurements. So you don't have to worry about the measurements now as you're watching the show. Just make sure you pay attention to the end and you can jot it down. All right, everything is about incorporated. Just a little bit more folding. And you see how, how it's sticking? You see that? We want that. That's what we want. You see how it's starting to hold together? That's what we want. So when we place it on the grill, it won't fall apart. All right, everything is about incorporated. Just a little bit more folding. And you see how, how it's sticking? You see that? We want that. That's what we want. You see how it's starting to hold together? That's what we want. So when we place it on the grill, it won't fall apart. Okay, now that we have all of our ingredients incorporated, two things when making these patties. You can use gloves or you can use your hands. My mother taught me a secret. If you're gonna use your hands, just take a little bit of oil. Olive oil, vegetable oil, it doesn't matter. Just a little bit of oil. Get your hands nice and oily. And some people say, why are you doing that? You'll see in a second. So we take our meat and we form our patties. Now, I always tell people, whenever forming your patties, you can make them as big as you want or as small as you want. This is the way I do mine. I make them into basically meatballs to a, to a degree. About to get two, two inches around. And you see, aha, it's not sticky. That's why we use the oil. So for me, a pound normally yields me about three burgers, as you can see. 
However, some people make them smaller. They can get about five burgers out of it. If I was going to do sliders, the actual smaller burgers, I probably would get a good nine to 12. So we have our burgers made up. Just grab a plate, place them on there. That one stuck to the board. Sometimes it happens. <laughs> All right, so we have them made up. I'm gonna head over to the grill. See you there. So now it's time for my famous mozzarella sticks. I've talked all about them, so now let me show you how to do it. It is so easy. So you're gonna start with your normal low-fat mozzarella sticks. The same kind of mozzarella sticks you buy at the grocery store, stick in somebody's lunchbox, the ones from when we were kids. Why don't you open them? Just get each one of them. And you can use regular fat. I prefer the low-fat. I think when it melts in the oven, it melts a lot slower, so you can kind of get a better product out of it. A trick with this recipe, keep the mozzarella sticks in the freezer until you're ready to use them. So, line them up, perfect. Take your knife, cut them right down the middle. This size is a lot easier to handle, it's easier to make, it's easier to eat, it's easier to cook. So now, you have all your mozzarella sticks. So this is the most important part about the mozzarella sticks. You gotta get that breading, that seasoning down. Since you can't use breadcrumbs, you gotta get a little creative. So it's sort of my version on a gluten-free breadcrumb mix. So let's start with your spices. We have one tablespoon of paprika. Throw it into any kind of bowl. Now some Italian seasoning. You can make your own. If you don't have an Italian seasoned blend, oregano, parsley, some garlic, onion powder, definitely does the trick. So one tablespoon of that. So there's your spices. Let's put that in here. Can't do anything without salt. So let's put a little bit of salt in here. I would say you're getting about a teaspoon of salt. I apologize, I'm not weighing it out. Sometimes things are just eye and feel. So there's your spices. It's a lot of spices for a small amount of breadcrumbs, but it really is what's going to give this whole dish flavor. And here I have a quarter of a cup of almond flour. Almond flour is great. It's nice, it's soft, it works well in so many recipes. And it's low carb, so it's a great flour. In here, we have the same thing. We have some cornmeal. And that's it. You now have all of your spices together. So, I have my little whisk. Don't get intimidated by chef tools. I mean, we are in a great kitchen. We get all these tools in our hands, but you can choose a fork, a spoon, whatever you have. If you take a really close look, that's what you're gonna have. It's a nice seasoned breadcrumb. Kinda looks like regular breadcrumbs. Okay, now for your batter. This one's pretty easy. I have one full egg, already cracked, so you can see me get all dirty, and about an ounce of regular whole milk. You can use skim, that's fine. I wouldn't recommend using an egg beat or anything like that, because that wouldn't work as well. And you gotta whisk this well. You really wanna incorporate that egg white and that yolk. A whisk, a fork does this fine. And once you get it, you'll start to see those bubbles right on top. Beautiful. Now is the fun and dirty part. It's important to keep your baking sheet nice and oiled. Don't go overboard, but you want to have something that's not going to have the mozzarella sticks stick to it. So you're just going to take oil. Squeeze bottles are a chef's best friend. You keep these around. They're easy to clean. You can put anything in them. They're great for decorating. They're great for oil. Pretty much great for everything. So just a little bit of oil. And I'm going to use a paper towel and just smear it on. No need for those spray bottles with all those weird chemicals in it. You just need a little tiny drip of oil. And then you just, that's it. That's simple. Now, here's the fun part. Definitely get your kids involved. This is a great recipe. So I'll do two at a time. Put in your cheese. So now your cheese is nice and wet and gooey. Throw it into your breadcrumb. Give it a shake. Feel free to put this in a bag. It doesn't have to be in a bowl. Sometimes, you know, throwing it in a bag and shaking it up is a lot of fun. And then we keep going, two and two. I don't know if you're catching me here, but I'm keeping one hand dry and one hand wet. This way, if my phone rings or if I need to grab something, have to worry about having to go wash my hands before I do it. I mean, these are looking pretty awesome. And it's not a lot of breadcrumbs, it's not a lot of anything. But look how easy this is. 
Now, I'm using half a bag of mozzarella sticks. So, if you want to make a lot more than this, get two bags, you'll make a ton. You can see it does not take very long to do. Oh, there you go. I mixed it up. Sorry. See, if Terrell was in here, he'd be making fun of me. So, make it a big mess, and I look like a little kid. Alright, I'm not trying to bore you, but you have to see the next step. So, you have the first coating on there, but what's awesome about these, you're going to get them nice and crispy, you got it double coated. I know it sounds really tedious, you've already got the breadcrumbs on there, but no, double coated, it comes out great. So go back and do the same thing, just put it in the egg and the milk again. You're going to go through the exact same thing, tossing, 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 tossing. And now you're going to see the coating the second time is a lot thicker than the first time. So look at the difference between those and that, and that's what you're looking for. So I'm going to continue doing this and I'll come back to you in a few minutes when we stick this in the oven. It's time to put the mozzarella sticks in. What's awesome about this recipe, you know your friends are all coming around 5 o'clock, you can prep everything and stick them back in the freezer. The colder they are when they get out of here, the colder they are when they go in the oven, the better they're going to be. So I just took them out right now, I'm going to stick them in, 4 minutes, flip them at about 450 degrees, depends on your oven, watch them. Maybe you don't have to stand over the oven, but don't leave the kitchen. And once they start to move, they're done. So it's pretty simple. Stick them in. Tell Terrell to go get his french fries. See you later. Look at this. <laughs> she always still in food. Always. I'm done with my work. I'm hungry. Understandable. So we're just flipping this. Is here turning fries? Yes, pretty much. Just so they could get done on both sides. A little crispy, and that's about it. That's another two to three minutes. And you, can have, some, and you can have some more fries. It's really good. Thank you. Alright, we're gonna do burger and then a spatula. True, true. I mean, if you're going to make a burger, make a burger. Sorry. So you can't be making the burger and the fries and take away all the glory in this meal. So I took some of the uh, sweet receipt buns. Okay. And made garlic bread out of it. Just spread it off, garlic, oregano, twist it off. Okay, so we have a garlic bread for our burgers, right? Yeah. Okay, no cheese today? Oh, that's right. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Boom, we're in business. Thank you. As you can see, it toasts up pretty well. It looks very good. Scrumptious, delicious. Nice crispy on the outside, soft and tender on the inside. Gotta love it. That's that's a that's a bun. I'll leave you alone here for burgers. Thank you. So as you can see our burgers are done. We have nice grill marks on the side, on both sides. So what we're gonna do is just gonna remove them from the heat. Put them on a the plate. We're going to go grab our sweet potato fries to go with this, grab our buns, our mozzarella sticks. We're going to plate all this up together for you guys and show you the finished product. See you in a sec. I am so hungry. I know you are. So I'm always hungry. This looks unreal. Yes, it does. It looks good. I'm ready to eat. Yeah. You want to explain too. it first? Yeah. So. Well, here's the mozzarella sticks. Okay. Um, like I said before, you know, regular mozzarella sticks are deep fried. They're covered with flour and yep. stuff that I can't have. So this is my version. And your tomato sauce is ridiculous. Thank you. It has a little kick to it. Yeah, a little bit. Just like we like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Give it a try. Let me see what you definitely, think. Definitely. Definitely. Now, don't get it. You get that crunch. You get that gooeyness. And it was that simple. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to double dip. Yeah. That's what I like to see. Good? Alright. Enough said. Now, I need Enough to say. What is this? So we have our turkey burgers. Yeah. Of course, with our gluten-free bread. Absolutely. Sweet Christine. Yeah. She's definitely a sweetie. It's impossible to get a good gluten-free burger. This I know. It's great. Sweet potato fries. Okay. Baked off, of course. Olive oil, salt, pepper. They look awesome. A little bit. But are they crispy? Are they like uh, a real French fry? They're like real French fries, so they're crispy. Get tender really? at the same time. Yeah. I'm gonna try it out. Let's see this. Okay, breaks like a French fry. Crunch. Oh man! <laughs> oh man! Wow! Let me 
glad you like it. Oh, and we took some of this tomato sauce, we actually put it on our bread spread. So we just have some lettuce, if you want to put so lettuce, tomatoes, lettuce, tomato, cheese. Tomato, garlic bread. Garlic bread. A little bit of tomato sauce on the bread. Are you going to bite into this? Yeah, I am. I was waiting for you as well, too. So, oh. I, I, so you want to see me on camera? No, I mean, we're both going to eat my, at the same time. Bigger it's, than my face? That's the, a burger should always be bigger than a bun. That's how I look at it. Look at this. This is ridiculous. And it's all healthy. Wow, this is amazing. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Cheers. Cheers. Juicy, firm, nice flavors. Wow. The bread. Sweet, savory. I was about to say the bread has that sweetness to it. Chef Andy like would be bread. so proud. He would yeah, inhale and say, oh, it's got everything. The texture, exactly. the flavor, the crispiness. You better shut that camera off so we can pick out on these burgers. Yeah, because I don't want you to see exactly what I'm about to do to this <laughs> It may be illegal in 48 states, okay? <laughs> Enjoy. Bye. See you next time. See you later. Alligator.